Welcome back to the Lockwood Chronicles. My name is Larissa. <laughs> okay, so as we can see from my last upload date, I took quite a bit of time off, mainly because I read a lot of thrillers that involve social media and I was constantly worried I was gonna be murdered. So <laughs> that's the extent of that. Anyway, I'm back. Um, so let's get into it. I'm gonna go over my January reads and I only read four books, which is my goal each month is to read four books. It's manageable, it's easy, it's better able to absorb each story individually. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? So I'm just gonna give you kind of a three to four main things that I uh, the book is about instead of reading the whole synopsis because I like to go into books without really knowing anything. However, I watch a lot of booktube and I love when they describe books <laughs> that they love. Anyway, so the first book that I read of the year in January was A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. It was a book of the month pick, which was great. Uh, I felt like there was two very similar books like this for the January picks. Was this January? I don't even remember. Um, oh, December. This was a December pick. A History of Wild Places. Uh, deals with missing persons, magical realism, and kind of like a cult-like thing going on. It was cool, it was a fun little read. Um, wasn't my like favorite to start off, but I liked it, but the magical realism in it, like just know going into it, <laughs> like you, it's very much magical realism based, which was, and like a broad spectrum, which was kind of hard for me to believe, but at the same time, it was cool. It was kind of cool to see how everything unraveled. But yes, I did enjoy this one. The second book I read in January was A Game of Thrones. So my goal for this year is to read the complete series of Game of Thrones. I'm going to be reading one each month. Um, just because if I read them back to back, I will burn out like no other. So I read A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is the first in the series. I did read this two years ago in grad school, which was a big mistake because I could not remember anything because it was also like a really stressful, I mean, grad school itself was always very stressful, but yeah, when I read it, I enjoyed it, but I couldn't really get into it because I was so stressed about school and exams and all of that jazz. So three things about this, family, obviously the Starks, big, big push on the family, uh, political intrigue, which I had never really known was a thing until I heard somebody else say it. I'm like, that totally fits. So like the conniving, the scheming, um, politics of everything, like they're trying to get the throne. So many people. And then I just love the wolves of the Stark family kids. Like I just love them and I love the underlying meaning of them too. I just really, really hate Sansa. Sansa, Sansa and Joffrey. Oh my gosh, I can, I mean, if you don't know what happens to Joffrey, I cannot wait for what happens to Joffrey because I cannot stand him. Sansa, I can't wait for her to go through her character development because I can't stand her. I wanted to skip over her chapters every time and I'm like, no, it's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Anyway, I'm happy I watched the series before reading this though, because it's easier for me to picture all the different characters because it was, there's so many of them, so many. So I'm happy I watched the series prior to reading the book so I have a better like vision of what everything is. Levi's sniffing around in my room and, yes, you good? Okay. <laughs> Third book I read in January was What Once Was Mine by Liz Braswell. It's a Rapunzel reimagining where um, if her mother drank a potion from the moonflower instead of the sunflower, that's not right. Well, it's if she drank it from the wrong flower and what her hair does. Um, so her hair is hair of death, is what she refers to it as. And it also deals with a lot of self-acceptance and understanding 
and just kind of trying to um, work with yourself instead of against yourself and a lot of it has to do with friendship. There was a couple things in there that I I don't know I I love Flynn and Rapunzel I love their love story I love how they are like sunshine grumpy and go from a place of like he can't stand her to like like an annoying little person to he falls in love with her in the original I didn't get the same I didn't get the same feeling from that I kind of felt like his love from her was not authentic and kind of came out of nowhere because I yeah so I was a little bummed on that aspect also I was really annoyed with the way the structure of the book was so the book is a story being told by a brother to his sister there are little interruptions of the story um, between like the story itself and then the real world which was really annoying I understand why she did it for nostalgia purposes and like just a reflection on her own experiences but in terms of being engaged in the story it was really annoying and I felt like I could have done without his it just kind of took you out of that world which was you know kind of a bummer but it was good I, I'll be reading a few more out of the Twisted Tale series because I love Disney, obviously. And the last book that I read in January was The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris, based on a true story. Love historical fiction, and I really love historical fiction about World War II. Um, just, I find it fascinating, and <laughs> I don't know why. Um, just the and same with the Great Depression as well, like I, that whole span of years that were so close, the human experience in that time just really gets me and I just love it so much and I love learning about it. So The Tattooist of Auschwitz, whew, so good. Um, it's about like having hope in the darkest of places. This takes place in concentration camp, Auschwitz, obviously. I feel like the main message is how much power there are in connections and friendships and how it can be so helpful with getting through things as well as progressing through things too. Lael is the protagonist of this and he falls in love with Gita but he falls for her in Auschwitz while he is marking her, her, tattooing her. He is the tattooist of Auschwitz. He is um, a Jew that was imprisoned in Auschwitz. And it's so moving, so touching, and it's quite short, but yeah, I read this very quickly and I absolutely adored it. It was given to me by a friend and they were right that I would love it. So that is a wrap on my January reads. I don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> Oh. All right, so <laughs> that is a wrap on my January reads. Um, stay tuned for potentially more videos. Who knows, maybe I'll go dark again. I don't know, but right now, <laughs> here's the video. Well, respect others, respect yourself, and do something amazing with your day. Thanks, bye. <laughs> You're so mad. Yeah. <laughs>